Hey everyone, thanks for joining me again on a, another Facebook livecast. Um, my name is Jeff Palmer. Obviously, I'm the CEO and founder of Clean Machine. Um, first, I want to get one thing out of the way because we're going to be talking about uh, immune health. So, <clears throat> the FDA disclaimer I am not a healthcare professional. Nothing I share in this video is intended as advice to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease or condition. It's just me, good old Jeff, talking to you about information that I've read, science and research, and uh, hopefully it's good information that you can take away and use and incorporate in you. So welcome and thank you for joining me. This is, this is kind of an interesting topic. Uh, it's branch chain aminos for immune health. And like, wait, what? <laughs> branch chains are good for immune health? How is that? So I'm actually going to talk about some of that because um, as an athlete, you know, I'm a competitive athlete, champion natural uh, bodybuilder, uh, champ champion uh, natural physique, drug free. Um, so when you train very hard, whether it's endurance style training, triathlons, biking, running, uh, jogging, that sort of stuff, um, or uh, hypertrophy type training, intensive resistance type training, uh, you can actually really uh, deplete your body's immune system, lower your immune response. And that does can make us, uh, as the research has borne out, can make us more susceptible um, to, to different things actually harming our bodies. So we're going to talk about some of those things and, and what they do and how it works. Um, so what's interesting is there's, there's a lot of known research about glutamine. So glutamine is the most abundant amino acid in our body and we store a lot of it. And there's a good reason for um, the body holds on to glutamine because it actually uses it as a fuel source for our immune uh, cells, uh, lymphocytes and, 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 and T cells and these things actually can feed on the glutamine. That's why we store an awful lot of it and why it's the most abundant amino. Now, why am I talking about glutamine? I thought this was about branch chains. Yes, and this is where this comes in. Once you, you and some studies have shown it, like endurance athletes running their glutamine stores down 20, 30, 40%. I mean, that's, that's significant because that means it's less glutamine stores for your body to call on when it needs it to fight off a, an infection, uh, whether bacterial or viral parasite or, or toxin. Your body has to respond to that, and it, that response requires a fuel source. But what, the interesting thing is they, they did a couple different studies, and I will post the full studies. I have the full studies, not just the abstracts, the full studies, so you can go all the way through the details if you want. The full studies on uh, uh, how branched-chain amino acids uh, affect immune and support it in five different ways. We're going to start with number one, and as I just alluded to, glutamine. So glutamine is used as the fuel source for immune response. But what if you added branch chain amino acids? So they did this. They did it both in triathletes and long distance runners. So they showed that once you fed branch chains during and post-workout to these athletes, they didn't lose any glutamine at all. Whereas the other athletes, they were dropping 20, 30, 40% up to 50% in hard training resistant strength athletes, that's half of your glutamine stores wiped out post-training. But when you added branch chains, no difference at all. The same amount of glutamine stores in the body as were prior to the workout. Now this preserves or conserves glutamine so that your body has it to defend to properly immune respond against. So I'll read this right out of this study. Um, and this is a quote, direct quote. After the exercise bout, athletes from the placebo group presented a de decreased plasma glutamine concentration that was completely abolished by branch chain amino acid supplementation. Now, this is really important because by simply adding branch chains, 
your body conserved all that glutamine and now it has it ready to feed its immune system. That's real important. And I know on my last one, we talked about fiber and how important it is to feed our microbiome and microbiome help produce much of our immune response, whether it be antibodies or our immunoglobulins produced right in the gut, 70 to 80% approximately. So, you know, this is a big deal. You want to give your body the nutrition it needs to be able to respond respond properly to immune. Okay, so why did the branched chains do that? Well, one, branched chain amino acids can be oxidized. That's used for energy. So they can, instead of using the glutamine for energy, they can use the branched chains for energy. That's awesome. Not only do our muscle cells can actually use branched chains for muscle energy by, through oxidation, but the immune cells can do that as well. And this pers uh, preserves our stores of glutamine to allow us to use that glutamine when we really need it to protect us against infections. The second part then is using it for energy. The third part is uh, branched chain amino acids are necessary for synthesis of proteins that make up the cell structures of our immune cells. Now, if we have a lot of immune cells that are being marched towards the front gates to fight off infections, we're gonna need a lot of building blocks, a lot of proteins, and branch chains help rapidly muscle protein with muscle protein synthesis. Now, why is that important? Because number four, immune cells need to multiply rapidly to uh, go after a, an, an uh, infection or something that's attacking them like bacteria or viruses or parasites. So our body needs to ramp up really quickly. And in order to do that, it requires branched chain amino acids in order to make all that protein synthesis. So using it as fuel, using it as building blocks, for structural proteins, for DNA, for RNA, those are all proteins synthesized um, through the use of branched chain amino acids. And then of course, to rapidly multiply very quickly so that it can get the job done. So the last thing I wanna talk about then is number five, and that is, listen to this line from one of the other studies. BCAAs also modified the pattern of cytokine, that's part of the immune response, cytokine production, leading to a diversion of the immune response toward a Th1 type of immune response. Now there's a bunch of different types of immune response, some pro-inflammatory, some anti-inflammatory, and these help balance the situation. So you, you create a little inflammation to bring all the white blood cells there, the leukocytes, the, uh, all the different things to help uh, remove and heal, and then you need that to remove that inflammation away so you have a balance of those two situations going on. Now, it's interesting that that study said BAs, BCAs helped uh, activate and, and replicate uh, towards a Th1. Th1 is what is our body's immune response focused on bacteria and viruses really important for this time of period, what we're going through nationally, internationally, um, is we, we want a strong, healthy immune system that can be able to fight off bacteria and of course, viruses, which account for um, flu. Um, so this is amazing. This is exactly what we're looking for in um, immuno nutrition. That's a whole new field of research that that uh, researchers are looking into now, which is how are the nutritive factors, how are the supportive factors in our diet, in, in our nutrition, how are they helping for a healthy immune response? I think this is a very important field because the more we can strengthen our own body's response um, with these you know, new mutated, even stronger forms of viruses and bacteria, from heavy use of antibiotics and overbreeding and stuff like this, uh, we're, we're gonna need stronger and stronger immune system, vital response. And I don't mean stronger, just like way strong, because too strong is not good either. Uh, an overreactive immune system is not healthy either. What you want is a healthy immune response, one that is vital, one that responds quickly and has everything that it's need, but it's gonna need the fuel, it's gonna need the building blocks and branch chains can do both of those. 
plus it conserves the glutamine that is the backup fuel source for your immune system. Now this is amazing and then it tilts the body towards Th1 immune response to help it fight bacteria and viruses. This is exactly what we want out of our nutrition. Now, do we get enough uh, BCAs in our nutrition? Some do, some don't. Now, that's all based on what you're eating. If you're eating junk food, if you're eating uh, protein poor foods, um, if you're just not eating enough, all of those things can contribute to not being in an optimal state. And, you know, why not just have, make sure that your body is in, has the ability, has the nutrition available to it immediately to be able to respond. Remember, we're talking about a response that is a big response. It's an all out war campaign response. It's not just like you do everything, do every day response. But remember, when you work out with intensity or with long term endur endurance, your body is lowering your immune system that is immunosuppressant. So with up to 50% of your uh, glutamine levels being depleted, that can greatly significantly suppress your body's ability to respond in an immune response in a healthy way. Now, the next study I wanna talk about is very interesting because it looked at Olympic distance triathletes. These are really intense triathletes. And they, just like the other ones, had the huge reduction in blood glutamine. And correlatively, in association with that, those that did not uh, supplement had a 34% greater risk of infection. Those who did supplement, 34% less risk of infection after they completed their triathlon. So remember, training hard is great and overall, Exercise and training is great, is vital for a healthy body and healthy immune system. But remember, right after a workout, you can actually lower your body's, deplete your glutamine stores, and then lower your body's ability to respond in a healthy immune response. So it makes you vulnerable for a small window uh, post-exercise. But remember, by taking the branched-chain amino acids, it neutralized the, uh, the negative impact, the depletion of the glutamine. It helped support um, the immune system by giving it energy, have a replacement energy instead of glutamine that uses the branch chain amino acids. And the branch chains are, are needed for the body to help replicate and build up and multiply all the immune cells it needs for the attack. So help your army grow, help it build, help it stay strong and protect your reserves. All of that can be done with the addition of branch chains, making sure you're getting sufficient branch chains and whether you take a supplement or whether you're just making sure you're getting high quantity of good quality proteins, uh, plant proteins, especially with higher amounts like soy or uh, tofu or tempeh or uh, beans. Beans are very high in uh, essential amino acids and, and branch chain amino acids, uh, hummus. All these things are good sources post-workout to help feed that, or you can simply take uh, uh, branch chain amino acids and make sure you're getting that quantity. Now, there are some people who have reached out to me based on some of the <laughs> other studies that are going around right now. Um, are branch chains, um, uh, is there a concern by getting too much branch chains? Obviously, we don't want too much of anything, uh, but the amount of branch chains that are in a serving uh, branching powder is is insignificant. It, these, you know, the reason why it's in powder and assemblable is so that you can get it into the system quickly. It's not about the amount. So I'm going to leave you with this last study, and um, it, it was interesting because. If branch chains were really the culprit, we'd see something pop out in this study. What they did was they took uh, a group of people, a large group of people, and I'll put this study down in, in the comments section too as well. They took this art and they gave them both really high amounts of protein. They looked at the highest quartiles of protein intake in both those eating animal products as well as those that are vegan or vegetarian. Okay, so the protein amount was the same, although very high. Now, what they found in this study, and this is pretty remarkable, the study with the animal proteins, the highest quartile had a 75% uh, all-cause mortality increased rate of, of, of death. 
that's that's pretty bad. <laughs> that is pretty bad. That is not good at all. But what was even scarier is that high animal protein group, remember, same amount of protein as the plant group, they had a 400% increase in the risk of cancer. Yikes. Now, um, the branch chain amino acids are a little bit higher in, in, in uh, animal proteins as they are in things. But when you raise that protein level up, this is both way beyond uh, what our needs are for that. So we should see some of the same type of disease states coming out with the high protein plant. And it was not. The study shows these were attenuated or completely abolished it, if the plants were uh, if the proteins were plant proteins. Now that's amazing. That's telling me it's not the protein, it's the type of protein. And maybe and more importantly, it may be some of the other amino acids, which are the sulfur amino acids that uh, can create a whole host of things. But that's for another conversation, another uh, topic. But I just wanted to leave you with that, showing that um, uh, branch chains can be helpful at modulating glucose levels. I'll go over that in another video too as well, um, re helping regulate uh, uh, insulin levels too as well. So keeping your body fat low, keeping your muscles strong, maintaining and, and helping with overall recovery. Um, so many health benefits of branch chains. And look, branch chain amino acids are in every protein, right? Um, so it's not really about branch chains or branch chains, whether they come from animals or plants. You don't want to get superfluous amounts of anything, any amino acid or any nutrient for that sake. Um, many nutrients in, in too high doses is, can become toxic or even lethal. So, you know, obviously even water, uh, you can actually drink so much water, you dilute your electrolytes and can cause heart attacks or, or other um, conditions. So even water uh, can be lethal when you do too much. Doing too much is never a good thing of anything. So don't be stupid. Uh, do right amounts, use as directed on labels, give yourself the nutrition, especially the immunonutrition. Uh, look up that phrase, Google in immunonutrition, because there are a lot of nutrients, like I discussed in my last video, how fiber feeds our microbiome, which supports our immune cell production, which then helps us fight off these things. That's a beautiful thing. We just got to give our bodies the nutrition it needs. And when we put ourselves in optimal nutrition, we can beat this. We can challenge a lot of these things that our body gets challenged with and when. But we need to keep this body healthy. Remember, exercise, but if you exercise with intensity, be sure to get that proper post-workout nutrition to bring your immune system back around and uh, make you less susceptible to infections post-workout. Remember, a 34% decrease risk and in infection in that study on triathletes, uh, Olympic triathletes. That's amazing. I mean, when you're talking about running the risk of an infection that could keep you out of the gym, keep you sick, even spread to your loved ones, that's not worth it. Make sure you're getting the proper nutrition, feed your body what it needs, and your body will be there for you. Look, this should be your best friend. It's the one that carries you through your life the whole way. Treat it like your best friend. Do it the right thing. Ask it what it really needs. Go out there and read the studies. Read the research. Look at nature. Look at how nature has provided these things for us. And then give your body what it needs. It will carry you through. I hope you all are safe. I hope you all are well. And for those of you who are dealing with this, do check out my uh, blog, my uh, webpage. I'm constantly posting new information. I'm trying to get helpful information out there so that you can read these research and hopefully bring some help to you in many different ways. Thanks again for joining me on another episode. We'll be talking about lots more topics. Let me know what you'd like me to talk about and I'll try to bring them up on our on, on next episodes. I'll be here every Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, and I look forward to talking to you about our next topic. Thanks for joining me.